Welcome to our novel, Sons of Power. Hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. I was a mere boy when my father and brother died in 1994. However, having studied the mechanism used by global powers during the Cold War, I understood that this was more than just a car explosion. I never ever imagined once in my life that I could become the Roman Polynesian Emperor as I dreamed of being a free man doing whatever I please. Politics was supposed to be my brother's field, how I wished we focused more on developing our brotherhood rather than being petty over trivial matters. The responsibilities of the Roman Polynesian crown are immense. We are this vast group of more than 23,000 islands scattered across the globe, vying to remain relevant in a bipolar world, refusing to yield to any side, but striving to establish our very own identity. Whether I liked it or not, I was to step up, and further complex events would eventually force my hand, turning me into something I wished I did not become. Prime Minister Combo understood very well that Emperor Felix was never going to sign into law his amended constitution. Many expected him to come up with a suitable replacement, and perhaps a puppet he would control. This was the most realistic approach, but people failed to realise the impressive support he had in the shadows. I get it. Who could have thought the events of Kagoma could see the light of day? Afterwards, who could have thought my father would die in such circumstances? After a few weeks spent in the Cariades, I informed my grandfather of my intention not to hide anymore. I wanted to return to Constantinopolis. If I was to be the emperor of these lands, I had to demonstrate courage and determination, something he understood. Mother was not particularly fond of my approach, but my resolve was undeterred. She eventually yielded. Upon my arrival, the emperor ordered all the nobles to welcome me, as if I was their leader. I landed in Constantinopolis on June 3rd, 1994. Upon landing, I was greeted by Major General Andrei Wyker, my cousin, the head of the Praetorian Guard. He then took me to the Imperial quarters, where my ill grandfather told me, My advisor, you are here. I am weakened by grief and sorrow. You must take matters in your hands. The cowards, you must find them and kill them all. You may be a child, but you are always a step ahead. Andre and Kalikini will prepare you. They will guide you. He murmured. He was then let to rest, and Lord Kalikini, Andre's father, wanted to share some words. Your grandfather wants you to rule, but he does not expect leaders of the other noble house to listen to a boy. He is still emperor, but he wants to exclude himself from ruling. I will act as Lord Protector, but gradually you have to affirm yourself before all, cement your authority so that there is no misunderstanding as to who the next Emperor is. Upon your sixteenth birthday I shall crown you Emperor of the Romans, but even before then I shall obey your every command," he said. The court was unsure about the future of the crown. With Kaha under house arrest, and the Emperor's health deteriorating, Lord Kalikini was the leadership figure, one who commanded respect and authority. After spending some time in the Cariades with Mother, Rhea and Julius Caesar, they all took their leave. Rhea returned to Boston, where she resumed her studies under heavy protection. Mother and Julius Caesar returned to Kitonga to prepare their return to New Thessaly, where we all belong. At some point, I had the sense that we did not have to fear much with Kaha locked up, but eventually, the inevitable happened. This time, however, the culprit would be well known, and he was nowhere near our immediate circles. Hours before dawn on September 17th, two days following Mother's return to Kitonga, the phone rang in my quarters, around five in the early morning. That day, I was scheduled to leave Cowrie Town and return to Constantinopolis. On the other end of the line, it was Governor Okpere Dowden of Clan Nampoko. My lord, Kogoma is under attack as we speak. Forces loyal to Combo have invaded the Sanya state. 
Please join me in the control room in haste, he said with a panicked tone. I rushed as fast as I could under the escort of my Praetorians. It appears Combo, realising that the Emperor would not yield to his intention to run for his fourth term, decided that he was going to abolish the monarchy. Tens of thousands of his soldiers were reported to have crossed the border into the Sanya state, and already we received reports of thousands of militiamen crossing the Kitonga border from Kiwanda. This was a coordinated attack, planned it seems for months, one we did not see coming at all. We immediately tried to call Mother, but the lines were disconnected on the other end. This was a deliberate attack on the imperial family of Kitonga, and as such, Roman Polynesia was to answer with its full might. I proceeded to call Constantinopolis, and Lord Kalikini was updated on the situation, calling for an emergency meeting with the imperial nobles. It was unanimously agreed that we were to send a regiment to repel the attack, but the maximum number of troops we could afford to send was 5,000 men, who were to be deployed from the Cariades, the closest imperial military command centre. Additional men would follow from the other regions, and so began a race against time. The second part of this account will continue on the next episode. We appreciate the time you took to watch the entirety of our video and would be honored to count you among our new subscribers. Thus, if you have not done it yet, we invite you to hit the subscribe button here and click on the notification bell to be notified about our upcoming videos. We are hoping to count you among our viewers in the next episode. See you then. Cheers.